Good morning, everyone that's watching. I said that I would be making some pretzels today. It's a soft pretzel recipe. If you saw, I posted it. Um, oh, it's been a few days now, but um, anyway, so we are going to make some pretzels today if you're interested, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so here we are. Um, our ingredients that we're going to be using today really simple really basic we've got flour salt we have a little bit of sugar we have our yeast and um, then when it rot and some water of course it's supposed to be warm water and then after we form our pretzels and with the rising and all that stuff then we're going to also uh, do a baking soda bath in warm water and then sprinkle it. What I'm gonna do is put the kosher salt on it. You, you can do that or you don't have to. You can also, once the um, pretzels are formed, you can actually freeze the dough and the shape and um, pull one out at a time or a couple out at a time and let it thaw, give it the bath in the baking soda bath and then bake them and you'll still have like a fresh pretzel, um, something similar what, um, actually uh, I worked next to a pretzel place when I was 16 years old for my first job. I didn't work there, but it was right next to each other. And the way they did it was the same thing. And they do frozen pretzels that they bring out and they would, um, go through that process of thawing and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this and I'm going to go over and do each process. All right, so we're gonna start with, it's one and a half cup of warm water. A whole packet of active dry yeast. And I try and get either organic, non-GMO for everything that I use. So just to let you know, that's just me. You can go as cheap as you want or however you prefer, but that's just the way that I roll. You're gonna sprinkle that in there. You're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. I'm just using the pink Himalaya. You don't have to use that kind. You can use whatever salt you prefer. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of sugar and I just use the sugar in the raw, the sugar cane sugar. So this is the kind that I'm using today, the Florida. And it's a teaspoon as well. After you put all that in there, you're going to give it a good stir, and then we're going to let it sit for five minutes to kind of activate. The sugar helps the activation. So I'm just going to give it a good stir, make sure it's well blended, and nothing going on just yet. So we'll go ahead and let it sit for five minutes. Okay, so it's been five minutes and I'm back. And during that five minutes, it's started to foam. You can kind of see the foam all in there and that's what you want to do. And if any of you have noticed that the, something wasn't right in the steps that I did, I added salt and um, I don't know why I put the salt in. Usually you just do the sugar because the sugar helps activate the yeast. So norm normally after you do the five minutes, then you'll add the salt and the flour. So now we're gonna go ahead and add two cups of flour. And during that time, I had to get myself some uh, chai tea that had caffeine versus the non-caffeine, because uh, apparently I was still a little uh, sleepy. Yeah. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the flour. So we got two cups of flour. We're gonna go ahead and add directly into here. And we're gonna stir it with a wooden spoon. Specifically, a wooden spoon is recommended. And I can follow directions sometimes, so we're gonna follow directions. After we get this stirred and uh, mixed in, then we're gonna add another cup and a half to start forming the um, dough into a ball. Um, 
and we'll take about a half a cup and sprinkle some of it on the countertop to knead it once we have a ball formed. So this is where I'm at right now. So we'll add another cup. Total amount of flour we'll be using is approximately four cups. That's one cup. Go ahead and stir that and we'll add the half cup. Once you have a ball formed, you can get, and you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you just go ahead and get in there and start playing around, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, if you have a bread mixer, you could just do it the easy way and use your bread mixer. Um, I am my bread mixer, so I'm using my arms. That's all I have. So you can see I've got a ball kind of starting to form. I'm going to go ahead and add the half a cup. I'm just going to sprinkle it in. And I'm going to go ahead and get messy. I'll just go ahead and sprinkle that in a little bit and work it. And then I'm going to get my other half cup ready for... working on the countertop. So um, I'm just gonna kinda get myself ahead of the game on this. And yes, I will be making a mess. I'm guaranteed I am not a uh, <laughs> clean person when it comes to baking. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this dough off the spoon. My, You could do it probably a couple different ways of getting a little bit of oil on your hands or something to work it off, but I just make sure I have flour in my fingers and and uh, take it off that way. After I get the dough off the spoon, we're gonna work it, get the flour that's in there that needs to get mixed, and form our ball, and then we'll put it on the floured surface to knead it. So I'm just still trying to mix it into a ball. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and knead it. And you're going to knead it for probably about six minutes until you get a really nice elastic ball that's not sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we'll get back to you in just a moment. Okay, so it's been about six minutes. And um, I went ahead and I've got my uh, dough formed and it is no longer sticky. That's the biggest thing is you don't want it to be sticky. It, it's um, smooth and elastic. So that's what we're going for. We're gonna go ahead and put it in a clean bowl. We're gonna coat it with oil. So I already put well, probably about a tablespoon of oil in there. Um, and we're gonna just coat the whole, the whole dough so that it is completely coated. We're gonna cover it with saran wrap and we're going to let it sit for 30 minutes to rise so we're going for about double in size and once that's done then we will start forming our pretzels so again we're going to go ahead and cover it with saran wrap give it 30 minutes um, I cover mine with this ram wrap, but I'm going to also put this towel on top to kind of insulate it with the heat um, as well. That's just how I do it because um, it's a little bit cooler in our house than maybe somebody else's house and I need the warmth to uh, help it rise. Um, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and leave it and we will be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been approximately 30 minutes and we're getting ready to play with the dough again. So now what's left is, um, check on my dough, see if it's kind of 
So it looks like it's risen a little bit, but it really hasn't gotten as much as I'd like. So I'm going to actually let it go for another 10 minutes and I'm going to warm up my stove just a little bit so that the heat will help, you know, that yeast activate and rise a little bit more because it is a little cool in the house. So I'm going to do that. So it is about 10 minutes and I don't know if you can see, but it has risen a lot more. So it's almost doubled in the size, a little bit smaller than double, but I, you know, I probably should have had the oven on for uh, a while, while it was uh, rising during the 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. The next step is to go ahead and uh, we're gonna divide it into um, 12 pieces, 12 equal pieces. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Got myself a knife. The way I'm gonna do it is I'll just go ahead and divide it in half. And then with each half, divide it again, and so on and so on until you have like approximately 12 equal pieces. I'm probably just going to put them in a little ball after I uh, separated them in half. And I'll just put 12 pieces. And I actually um, am doing it a little bit smaller on some of them. So that's 12 pieces. And I'm going to make two big ones right now. <laughs> okay, so while those are just sitting there, um, I went ahead and turned the oven on. It's got a preheat at to 400 degrees. Um, the next step would be to go ahead and form your um, rolls. I also have my half a cup of warm water and I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in my two tablespoons of baking soda because I want it to be ready to go to dip it in because we're gonna be giving it a baking soda bath. So while that's dissolving and doing its thing, we're gonna go ahead and roll this into a long rope. So this is, you can do it a couple different ways. You can just roll it like playing with Play-Doh when you were a little kid, or if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, the idea is to get it about 12, or actually at 24 inches, which is, roughly two feet, but I don't think you need to really do that. And then you're gonna take it, twist it, and bring it on up so it will end up looking like a pretzel. I don't know if you can see it. I made a cute little pretzel. Voila, pretzel. So I have a greased baking sheet. I've already greased it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there in a minute. But we'll go ahead and do another one. Again, I'm just kind of forming it. We're gonna get these all done. What I am gonna do is I'm going to do half of them. I'm gonna go ahead and bake, and the other half I'm gonna freeze so I can save them. And if they're any good, I'll be able to have them um, whenever I want. Or if I feel like sharing, which I'm going to do with my auntie, then I'll share with my auntie. So again, we're going to just go ahead and twist it, bring it up, and form your cute little pretzel. And that's kind of all there is to it. So once uh, you have it like that, um, then we'll give her a little bath shortly. I'm gonna get it dipped in here in this bath. You can probably see me, I already have my baking sheets grease. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll put it on there. The purpose of the dipping it is it's gonna give it that shine that you get when you Get the pretzels from like those pretzel places and so that's why we're doing the uh, bath anyway so you got some 
pretzels started and I'm gonna finish the rest of them and then we're gonna put the salt on and I'll show you all that shortly. Okay, so we got our little pretzels formed. I made them kind of smaller just because um, I'm trying to watch how much I eat because I'm kind of lazy like that. And so now I'm gonna just go ahead and get just a little bit of salt. We're gonna sprinkle it on top. And this is just a kosher salt. It's not the one that I would have preferred to use, the big flaky one like uh, you would find, but it, it serves the purpose. So I'm just lightly coating it and um, putting a little salt on each one of these. And we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the oven and they're gonna bake for, um, I guess it's about 16 minutes, 16, 18 minutes. And it, again, it's gonna just vary. So you're gonna have to watch as soon as it starts to brown, then you should be good to go, okay? So we'll go ahead and put it in the oven, check them out. So here's uh, some of my pretzels that came out. Um, you can see, I probably will do it a little different next time. I didn't really do a very good job of mixing the sodium and water. Um, and I think I'm only gonna do the top part for the most part and not the very bottom. Or if I do the whole thing, I'm gonna make sure I line my pan with just parchment paper because it's with the sodium and water combination, it's stuck to the pan on some of them. And so um, you can see a little piece came off of there. But um, let's take a bite and see. It tastes really good. Tastes like a pretzel. It has that nice little crisp to it too, like when you get it from some of those other places. You could put um, some mustard on it. Some people like their mustard. Some people like putting cheese. Um, you could probably even do those sweet ones where you do the cinnamon sugar, like um, some of those pretzel places, but not too bad. I liked it. <laughs> 